stand on this one. You're going to want to. Well, I choose to feel good about my life today. Look beyond appearances that painted my way. Connect deep down with the spirit inside. Rejuvenate with energy and let God guide. Shine my light to inspire. Be a real life. Why? Well, that's all right with me. I got love in my heart. I got a whole lot of soul. I've got joy in my life. From my head down to my toes. I got my light shining bright. And that's all right with me. Here we go. Well, I'm going to do random acts of kindness out there. Surprise them with a thank you and show them I care. With a big old smile that's upon my face. I'm bouncing my step to a positive pace. Sending high with some poise. Make a big joyful noise. Well, that's all right with me. I got love in my heart. I got a whole lot of soul. I've got joy in my life, from my head down to my toes. I got my light shining bright, and that's all right with me. I've got love in my heart. I've got love in my heart. I got a whole lot of soul. I've got joy in my life, from my head down to my toes. I got my light shining bright, and that's all right with me. I got my light. I got my light shining bright, and that's all right with me. I'm going to call on somebody to put this back together. <laughs> Jan, it just gets screwed in there. Thank you. <laughs> oh, yes. Great way to start. Woohoo! <laughs> yeah. So let's say welcome once more to everybody watching us virtually. We're so glad you're taking the time out. And to everybody who came out on this brisk morning, we welcome you. We're so glad to see each and every one of you. We have a scripture to begin us off, Philippians 4.4. 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. And we begin our service as we always do with an opening prayer. Let's take a moment. Settle in. Notice your breath. Release all of the busyness, all of the to-do lists, becoming fully present in this moment. Rejoice in the Lord. The Lord, our, our I am, our higher self, the part within that is true, that is good, that is love. We just rejoice in this part of who we are, our true essence. We give thanks for this gathering today and coming together in friendship and laughter enjoy and so it is amen and now if you will join me in our mission statement together unity of hagerstown a welcoming community embraces spiritual awakening through affirmative prayer and meditation creating a positive path of abundant living for all and now we have the reading of the daily word with sally galloway Good morning, everyone. Today's word is prosperity. When I think of prosperity, I may think of financial wealth or my possessions. I may even feel tempted to compare my life to someone else's and feel as though I come up short in comparison. Today, my understanding of prosperity grows. Feeling safe and secure in who I am is prosperity. Knowing I am gloriously made in the image of God is priceless. Realizing the abundance of the natural world and partaking of it is a gift. 
All of these are wonderful reminders I reside in the kingdom of heaven. The more I appreciate the riches of the material world, the more aware I am of my greatest prosperity, my oneness with God. The scripture for today is from Matthew 6.26. Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And please say with me today's affirmation. I broaden my perspective of prosperity. Allow yourself a moment to take that in. And let's repeat that. I broaden my perspective of prosperity. Now we have another song with Brett and Patty. Welcome to Stand. Spirit is joy, oh holy joy. Spirit is joy, oh holy joy. Spirit is joy, oh holy joy. Let your light blaze through. Let your image reflect the truth that you are God's own child. Shout about the light within, holy, pure, and undefiled. Spirit is joy, oh holy joy, springs forth from my soul to you. Catch on fire with the zeal of God, oh let your light blaze through. Dance and sing, yes, laugh and shout, creation gives you the clue. You say that your God is love, well it's time to live like it's true. Spirit is joy, oh holy joy, springs from my soul to you. Catch on fire with the zeal of God, oh let your light blaze through. Spirit is joy, spirit is joy, oh holy joy. Spirit is joy, oh holy joy. Spirit is joy, oh holy joy. Let your light blaze through. Yes, let your light blaze through. Woo, yes, thank you. Please be seated. <sighs> so we've been covering the series based on the Book of Joy, which is an interview uh, by Douglas Abrams of Desmond Tutu and uh, the Dalai Lama. And last week we looked at some of the, hang on for a second. <laughs> going to fall off. <laughs> there we go. Some of the obstacles to joy, um, we covered stress and fear, loneliness, and today we're going to cover sadness, grief, and despair. <laughs> Aren't you glad you came? <laughs> My goodness, what was I thinking? <laughs> oh, oh, but you know, these are all part of the human experience, right? We've all felt these emotions at some time. Now, sadness must, might seem like the uh, most opposite, most polar opposite of joy, the biggest hurdle to having uh, that emotion of joy. But in, and, and in studies done, sadness lasts many times longer than other emotions. Fear, anger, on average, lasts maybe 30 minutes uninterrupted. That's the average. While sadness can last up to five days without interruption. And while we learned last week that fear is necessary for survival, it's a tool that we have. Remember the example of walking by the lion? You kind of want to be fearful in certain situations so you don't get yourself in them. It's hard sometimes to see that, that value in sadness. 
research done by Joseph Vargas has shown that people who are experiencing sadness, though, have better judgment, have better memory, are more motivated, more sensitive, and more generous. Folks experience a state of sadness are more discerning regarding their situation, better able to remember details, more motivated to change their situation. And this may explain why sometimes we're drawn to art or music or literature that brings a tear to our eyes. The Archbishop Tutu believes that sadness leads us most directly to empathy, to compassion, to reaching out to others, and these are all elements of joy. Joy and sadness, while we may think of them in separate little boxes, are connected. And as we learn to accept all of the emotions, it leads us to that kind of quiet, consistent life of joy that this book is all about. Richard Rohr tells us in many people the inability or refusal to feel their deep sadness takes the form of aimless anger. The only way to get to the bottom of anger is to face the ocean of sadness underneath it. You know, in today's society, there's kind of an expectation out there that we're going to heal quickly from a loss. You know, we're given maybe a week off of work and we're expected to bounce right back. Annie Lamont tells us, I fell for the lie that grief should be gotten over as quickly as possible and as privately. But what I've discovered is that only grieving can heal, heal grief. The passage of time will lessen the acuteness, but time alone, without the direct experience of grief, will not heal it. It is only by experiencing that ocean of sadness in a naked and immediate way that we come to be healed, which is to say that we come to experience life with a real sense of presence and spaciousness and peace. Grief is a reminder of the depth of our love. Without love, there is no grief. Feeling the grief is also feeling the love. We know when we process our emotions, we name it to tame it, right? We feel it to heal it. We allow it to learn from it. The Dalai Lama says that sadness and grief are, of course, natural human responses to loss. But if your focus remains on the loved one you have just lost, the experience is less likely to lead to despair. In contrast, if your focus while grieving remains mostly on yourself, what am I going to do or how am I going to make it through this? then there is a greater danger of going down the path of despair and depression. So again, so much depends on how we respond to our experience of loss and sadness. Taking the time to recognize that everyone experiences loss at some point throughout their life. It's part of the human condition. And then being gentle with ourselves acknowledging the pain, not trying to stuff it back down. The Dalai Lama shares his own experience through sadness and grief and says the way through sadness and grief that comes from great loss is to use it as motivation and to generate a deeper sense of purpose. If the one you lost could see you and you are full of hope, they would be happy. I want to share with you in his own words, the story of a young boy who his, his parents sent over to Dharamsala, or the, the uh, center where the Dalai Lama established in India, so that he might go to the school there, because in Tibet, they're, they're not taught of the, the Tibetan history or culture or even the language in the schools. He states, my name is Tenzin, and I'm from class seven. Now, I'm going to share how I, I escaped from Tibet with my father. As the morning arrived, the moon was still there in the sky. My mother came and told me to study hard and be a brave boy. As soon as my mother was turning away from me, she shed a flood of tears. My father came beside me, patting my back, signaling, signaling that it was time for me to say goodbye. 
I cried my eyes out, not wanting to leave, but my mother insisted that I go with tears in her eyes. Soon the bus came as we were waiting outside my home. I left my home with a heavy heart and I stood staring through the window of the bus, capturing all of the beautiful land and people in my heart so that I could recall them whenever I missed my home. As the snow began to cover the road, my friends and I did not give up. We rode on the yak's back and the elder ones walked in the deep snow of our land. I saw a bridge awaiting us to come and travel through it. My heart was pounding so hard. We slept through the daytime and walked past the Chinese soldiers at night. My sister had serious pain as we were walking. The day passed with walking and hiding. The pain that I went through while coming to India was nothing compared to the pain of leaving my family far behind. Since I left my family, I found no joy in everything I did. I no longer enjoyed bus singing, the sight of flowers blooming, the rainbow. The freedom inside me was taken away. I felt myself buried in a deep sorrow with no hope of survival. I was dying slowly inside. The journey to India was the scariest and toughest journey I had ever gone through. My father and I came to Dharamsala, and he took me for shopping and left me in the school, saying that he will come the next day, but he lied. I waited for him anxiously, crying every single hour that was passing. Soon, I got many friends, a loving school and caring teachers, and the blessing of his holiness. I felt a spot of joy inside, and I started enjoying my life here in exile. Now I find joy in everything, my loving fellow students, attending classes, and I feel somehow myself again, but I strongly wish to see my mother and to be with her in my own land. That would be the greatest joy of my life. I believe if his mother could see him, that she would be happy because he has found joy in this life. And I also believe that he has found a purpose in his studies to help him get through his sorrow. <coughs> so I, I just wanted to share one screen. If you're, if you're grieving over the loss of a loved one, it doesn't matter how long ago they passed. There are support groups out there for you. Washington County Hospice has uh, four open support groups for anybody. You can attend via Zoom or in person. The dates and times are on the screen. Okay, just wanted to make sure that was there. You know, the experience of sadness or grief, it may feel like it breaks us, but it really breaks our heart open so that eventually we can move into that experience of joy. The deeper the sorrow carves into your being, the more joy you contain. Now, often we may ask ourselves, how can we be joyful in a world that has so much suffering, so many problems, and that feeling of despair may be overwhelming at times? Desmond Tutu says, you show your humanity by how you see yourself not as apart from others, but from your connection to others. Yes, we are capable of awful atrocities. It's good also to remember that we have a fantastic capacity for goodness. As Theodore Parker states, the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends towards justice. We are growing. Things are changing. We are remembering what it means to be human, to be kind, to be good. It's also a remembering of what it is that we are. At our essence, we are love. We are joy. We are peace because we are one with that joy of spirit. Despair can come from deep grief, but it can also be a defense against the risks of bitter disappointment and shattering heartbreak. Resignation and cynicism are easier, more self-soothing postures that do not require the raw vulnerability and tragic risk of hope. To choose hope is to step firmly forward into the howling wind, bearing one's chest to the elements. Know that in time, the storm will pass. So I, I heard recently, or I read recently, of, of a story of 10-year-old Agnesa. 
she and her family left the Ukraine um, as Russian forces poured into it, and they they fled to a refugee camp in uh, Romania. And they were linked at the camp with uh, somebody, a person in the Bay, San Francisco Bay Area who had an extra house who was opening up to refugees. So they, uh, they were able to get to that house, and I'm sure that they were very blessed in having a place to stay. But 10-year-old Agnesa was... I mean, on top of losing her home and her country and her friends, she was really feeling the loss of her cat because when the family fled, they were not able to take the cat with them. Her mom told a flight attendant they had made friends with on one of the flights over to the uh, Bay Area that Agnesa missed hugging her cat. She missed sleeping with her cat because... The cat had grown up with her. She, it was, you know, it was her cat for ever, for in her word, world. So that flight attendant contacted another flight attendant out of Hawaii who did animal rescue, and that flight attendant contacted a person in Houston who did animal rescue, and that person laid the groundwork for the the, uh, the retrieval of this cat. And then the next person on, on this long list of people who came together to help was Agnesa's uncle, who was taking care of the cat after the family had fled. And he had to microchip uh, the cat and get a passport for the cat and, <laughs> and have it vaccinated and, uh, and then drive him over the border on his motorcycle. Not sure how that happened. but <laughs> <laughs> And then from there... Um, another family of refugees took the cat in while waiting for the next step. And the next step was an animal rescuer on holiday in Greece volunteered to cut their vacation short in order to pick this cat up. But wait, there's more. <laughs> one, one more person helped out on this remarkable story. A tuk-tuk driver, do you know what a tuk-tuk, okay, a tuk-tuk driver um, helped out and dro drove the cat and this animal rescuer who had cut her vacation short back to Athens so that she could make her flight. So this cat, and here's a picture of him, this cat finally made his way home to Agnesa. And he, this cat put over 7,000 miles underneath his little paws. <laughs> but this is just one example of the millions of acts of kindness and displays of goodness daily. Tutu tells us, start where you are and realize that you are not meant on your own to resolve all of these massive problems. Do what you can. And I think that's important for all of us to remember. We do what we can. That, that inner wisdom lead us to what is ours to do. When we can get our thoughts past everything that is wrong and begin thinking of how we might make a difference and also thinking about what is good, what is right, then we come home in our hearts. We come home to spirit. We make a conscious connection with that which is good within us, that spirit of God, the Christ of our being. Philippians tells us whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Within this earth suit that we all have at this moment, there is your true identity, and that is of spirit. It is the genuine, authentic you that is wise and caring, strong and loving, confident, harmonious. And as we go along this spiritual path and learn to live from this presence within us that is always connected to all that is, we are enriching our lives 
the lives of our family, the lives of our community, and yes, even the lives of everyone in the world. I invite you to join me in our affirmation. Together, I am magnificently made in the image of God. We're going to move into a time of meditation. So I invite you to get comfortable, adjust your position if you need to. This will be a guided meditation followed by a period of silence. So we begin by taking a nice deep breath and exhaling it, relaxing the body as we do so. Another deep breath, pausing at the top of it. And as we exhale, calm the thoughts, becoming present. One more deep breath, pausing and letting any concerns of the heart be set aside. There is a spirit of wisdom within each of us. You can call it intuition, guidance. It is that feeling, that sense of what we need to do next, what is ours to do. Wisdom as one of the 12 powers has its seat in our uh, sternum. So if you want to place one hand just right underneath your chest, the other hand in your heart center, and you can focus on the powers of love and wisdom. With each breath we breathe in wisdom. With each exhale we breathe out love. I breathe in wisdom. I breathe out love. Wisdom to know what is mine to do. Love for myself, for my family, my neighbors, my friends, my community this beautiful world. I breathe in wisdom. I breathe out love. As we go into the silence, I invite you to keep your focus on love and wisdom. If your hands tire, go ahead and feel free to put them down. But keep the focus on sending that love to all who cross your mind and breathing in wisdom, knowing that there is a guidance system within you. In the silence.
and as we continue to sit restfully, allow the music from Brent and Patty to wash over us. just give thanks for this time of connection, of communion. Thanks for the gifts that Brett and Patty share with us and the peace and the joy within. Amen. So I invite you to join me in our affirmation on the screen together. I dwell in the infinite presence and express the highest degree of love, joy, and abundance and peace. And so we don't make affirmations. We don't state affirmations to make them true. On some level, they're already true. So we're making them so that our mind connects with them, right? So that we can express the highest degree of love, joy, abundance, and peace. And then join me in the uh, offertory prayer. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, all that I receive, and all that I am. Thank you, Mother, Father, God, for the abundance in my life. I'm happy, I'm joyful. I'm happy. 
Thank you so much. Now, let's see. Looks like we have a few announcements, folks. This Wednesday is our sound bath with Sabrina Madsen at 7 p.m. right here in the sanctuary, which reminds me, if you're able to, after the ser service today, help move the chairs out of the way. That would be great. And then also, next Tuesday is our first yoga class here at 6 p.m., and it's also the day of the soup kitchen. So if you signed up to bring food for the soup kitchen, please do so next week. <laughs> that would be helpful. <laughs> and then on uh, the 15th of February, our beloved D is doing a group residence repatterning workshop. And there is more information about that on the website or on the flyers in the back. And then we had so much fun at our movie night uh, this past Friday. At least I did. I hope everyone else did, too. <laughs> it doesn't take much for me. I don't get out much. <laughs> um, so we're going to do it again, and uh, that's going to be on the 24th. Mark your calendars. Deb Wolf has got the menu under control. She made some out-of-sight cheesecake. This past we had more than cheesecake, but that's what sticks out in my mind. <laughs> It was fabulous. Okay, and of course, if you want to stay up or with all of the current events, those watching virtually, and you don't receive our newsletter yet, I invite you to go to our website, unityhagerstown.org, and sign up for the newsletter at the bottom of the homepage. Whew. Okay, so much for, um, you know, promotionals right? <laughs> well, I'd like to take some time to honor our prayer chaplains. So for those who have been prayer chaplains in the past, I invite you to come forward. You know who you are. <laughs> Just come forward. Let's see. Okay. These beloved people. Now, typically we would have done this, but during COVID we did not. Come on over there. I see. Yeah. So uh, the people on the camera can see your lovely face. Okay. So each of you, yeah, so that you have served it, as prayer chaplains, some of you for mul many years, some of you for a few years, but it's greatly appreciated. And uh, typically, like I said, we would have honored you, but with COVID, my memory left. So, <laughs> so, so we're doing it now. <laughs> but you have each answered God's call to be of service as a prayer chaplain. And each of you have fulfilled your commitment in this service beautifully, and I honor you and thank you. Matthew 25, 21, in the parables of a talent, has Jesus sharing with the people of the day that God's call is for faithfulness in the use of our talents. It's true that no talents come full grown. It's only as we cultivate them that they begin to mature and multiply. The more we use them, the more others are blessed through them. Through this, we discover that our God has given us a multitude of gifts and has equipped us with endless resources. This is not an ending of your service, as, although it may be the ending of your service as prayer chaplain, but a new beginning as you find many different ways in which to serve. So I'd like for you to know 
well done. And behind you are flowers. If you would like to take a primrose, just just as a, a, a symbol of appreciation. And for the prayer chaplains who aren't here with us, or the former prayer chaplains who aren't here, here with us, we'll leave them up there. Oh, you never know, a wilder might come. <laughs> you never know. You know. So thank you so much. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, I think next week we're going to honor our current prayer chaplains, who are Arnie, Karen, Diane, and Helen. And um, we also want to make sure that January and Safi are honored with their service as prayer chaplains in the past, too. So, okay. So at this point, we're going to say goodbye to our beloved Facebook friends. We love you. We appreciate you. We thank you for being part of this community.